Okay, uh, so I just got finished watching Insidious, The Last Key. Okay, excitement happening in the parking lot. <laughs> um, never seen any of the other uh, Insidious films, so I can't really say how well this pairs up with the rest of them. Um, I, I, I would, I can definitely say that there's been at least, there was at least a handful of times where I want to say it made reference to other films. I don't know if it's supposed to be a prequel or whatever. I was sold on it just simply by the advert, which promised me a key-handed um, spooky monster man, which is in the film, but not in the way I thought it was going to be. Um, it was more dealing with human aspects more so than any kind of spectral uh, kind of stuff going on. Um, with that said, it wasn't too bad. It was it maybe wait, maybe wait for this one to come out on video. Um, that's basically my uh, my opinion of it. Um, what I would say is, let's go over the story a little bit. Um, yeah, this, uh, this starts off in the 50s. Uh, the main character, Elise, she is, uh, she has the ability to, um, you know, like she can kind of tap into spiritual stuff. She can, um, like they lived on a uh, site of a uh, correctional facility and someone died in the electric chair and she was able to tell like what his last meal was, what his last words were, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, there was a few jump scares. I mean, obviously, after like the first couple of them with the, the, the jump scares, things that they have to have in the soundtrack, they actually kind of cooled off of that. And, uh, you know, so they just let the spooky things be spooky after a while. Uh, I hate when they just, when they have to play the music stings, it's so stupid, it's like, let the spooky thing be spooky by itself. Don't have to try to draw more attention to it than what's necessary. Um, so basically, you know, she becomes a ghost hunter with two other guys. Um, and, you know, they... Someone calls her that, used to, that lives at the house she used to live in. And I think the guy who plays the character in that is... Uh, who owns the house now. Um, I thought it was originally the guy who played... Uh, Shane slash the Punisher um, in that, but uh, in the new uh, Daredevil series, but <clears throat> ended up being it was the guy from uh, uh, oh, what is it? French. It was the guy from French. He was like kind of like the douchey sidekick uh, partner to uh, whatever the woman blonde la lady's name was. I forgot what it is now, but uh, um, so yeah. Uh, he was in there and he was, he had someone come hostage and come to find out there was some entity that was in, was a key master or whatever, a key face, which is what he was called. It was like, I mean, didn't have a key face, a key hand, but no key face. So I don't know what that was about. Um, and you know, it was just kind of dealing with, you know, she went back home, she was dealing with the stuff there, memories and stuff like that. So it was, um, it was kind of... <sighs> It wasn't the movie title was going to be. First of all, a PG-13 horror movie, so it wasn't the kind of monster thing I was expecting it to be. Um, just, like I said, uh, let's see what else happened in there. <sighs> Honestly, I'm forgetting most of it already. I mean, I just got finished watching the thing. So it's... If, you, if you've watched the other movies, I'm going to look, out, look up the other Insidious films just to see how everything flows together. Um... There was one, 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 uh, what's the, well, not cliche, but the device that was brought up earlier in the movie. Her, her younger brother, uh, mother gave her, gave him like, like a train whistle almost, a uh, metal train whistle. So if you ever get scared, really, really scared, you need me, blow the whistle. Of course, um, there was a, a spooky thing that, that captured that whistle and was using it and stuff like that, which is in the trailer. Um, and then also, uh, later on, when they were caught in the nether realm or whatever, you know, where Beetlejuice lived. Um, and then, you know, so and then she blew it and then her mom, she, goes to her mom shows up and saved them. You know, it was, it was little devices, like plot devices like that, which I thought was a little, you know, 
there was some stuff that was telegraphed. There was some, you know, was it like there was one bit where uh, she was at the at least the uh, Dover lady. She was in the some kind of tunnel, or whatever, and apparently she found a bunch of old suitcases. And it's like, okay, look through, open it up, look through one, close the lid, shine a light. Oh, nothing there. You expect them. She's going to close the lid. There's going to be that. But actually, when she opened the last one, it jumped out of there, which was a good, good subversion of, uh, of, of of a cliche. But you know, so you knew something was going to happen. So it was kind of telegraphed ahead of time. Though they did do something different than what you expected. So that's, that's not bad. Um, if if you've seen the other Insidious movies, if you're a big fan of it, yeah, sure, you're probably already going to go see this regardless. But um, if you're like me and it's just like, eh, just if the trailer looks good, wait for it to come out on. Netflix, home video, Hulu, uh, Amazon Prime, whatever else. Uh, it's, um, adverts in front of the uh, in front of the movie. There was one specifically stuck out, stuck out in my mind. Is uh, they're doing a Slender Man movie. I don't know who's getting royalty checks from that one, um, but they're doing a Slender Man movie. That one looks really, really interesting. Um, in the description, I have a list of the other uh, trailers that were shown and. Exclamation points mark the ones that I'm actually interested in seeing, and I might actually see in the future. So, um, with that, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. I'm probably going to go see uh, Star Wars Last Jedi, so uh, look forward to that. Bye.